This envelope contains valuable LEGO documentation. It's been 30 years since I first got hold of this set of instructions. The year was 1989, and as a Christmas present, my parents bought me the Black Seas Barracuda. My first big Lego set, and still one of my favorites. It also contained my favorite minifigures. Captain Redbeard. The Monkey and Redbeard's Parrot. I still remember the hours I spent playing with this set, even after years went by. I also remember the hours I spent thinking how nice it would be if I could build a Lego ship that could float in water. Fast forward 28 years and the idea returned, when I bought myself a set of Lego Mindstorms. The initial idea was to create an automated floating platform for an action camera, and the easiest path was to use empty plastic bottles for buoyancy. The result was functional, but not good looking. A second attempt came to the form of a simple Lego hull wrapped in a plastic garbage bag and something like an outboard motor to provide thrust. The outboard motor design was interesting, but the whole design came out ugly as hell. As a third attempt, I ended up with a ship that was filled with styrofoam for buoyancy. The whole thing was an ugly, ugly looking contraption resembling a hybrid between Noah's Ark and... Um... You see what I mean there? Now, being very wise and all, I decided to build something in between my last two attempts and came up with this. That thing is an internal hull that will provide the vessel with much needed stiffness and will also house all of the motors, batteries and electronics. It will be wrapped with a plastic garbage bag and placed inside an outer shell that resembles a ship. The final form of the carrier looks like this, and Captain Redbeard with his part on a stick, and of course, the monkey, are ready to truly take to the seas, or lakes, for the first time. So, let's make this baby seaworthy.
After assembling all of its parts, the carrier will look like this. To control and power this vessel, I've chosen both S-Brick and Buoys. S-Brick will act as a controller, providing great connection stability, range, and the ability to create customized profiles that suit my exact needs for ship control. Buoys will act as a battery, and in fast or ludicrous mode will provide my S-Brick with that extra kick needed for greater speed. It will also be connected with a power bank for extended range. At the back of the vessel we can find the two large power function motors that power the ship's propellers, and the servo motor that controls its rudders. All the way at the front we have a lot of empty space to place ballast in order to balance the ship. The two propellers are from a remote controlled ship and are fitted on three stud leg axles. Each propeller has its own rudder for sharper turns. I've decided to use known LEGO propellers simply because of size. A LEGO propeller has the size of Redbeard's parrot on a stick. A small fish could easily swallow this little fellow. To balance the ship, I will be using various sizes of fishing line weights, and to properly place them in the hull, I went safe and used the bathtub filled with water. You can see in my final ballast setup that I used a total of 12 100 gram weights and one small 25 gram to keep the vessel straight. All of the weights are wrapped in soft paper towels to prevent them from puncturing the plastic bag that keeps the ship afloat. The goal of all this dead weight is to prevent the ship from capsizing when we place the heavy top cover on. To check your ship's balance, make sure the waterline level is the same on both sides. And finally, 